And how do you think it fits, I mean, generally, sort of more literally into this idea of mindfulness? We haven't talked so much about the actual soothing nature of it, the kind of, I know you've done lots of research, you said, you know, into the amount of hours, but how, how do you sort of describe that effect, that soothing, calming effect, that, that, would you call that mindfulness that drawing brings? Yeah, I mean, again, I can only really, I can only explain what, what it's like for me, but with me, it's that feeling of you sat down and you think you've been doing it for 10 minutes and you look at the clock and it's been 40, like that feeling of the rest of the world melting away and you're just so engrossed with what you're doing. And I don't know about you, but I can barely watch TV without looking at my phone. Like I cannot get through a film unless I put my phone completely away. Like I just find my attention span is just ping, 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 ping. And there's always a thing like, oh, I need to look that up or I must remember to buy that. And I think when you're doing this and you're coloring and creating, you are just fully engrossed in the task at hand. And it's so simple. Like your task is so simple. It's a little bit like the way I feel people find ironing really soothing. Like your task is just to get those creases out. I know people that love doing the washing up, just clean those dishes and then you're done. And I almost feel like because our brains are always working in so many opposing ways and multitasking, when you strip it all back and you just have one really simple task, there's something incredibly calming about that. I guess it's like swimming, you know, when you get into the rhythm of the strokes and everything else is blocked out. I think any time that we can do that, cocoon ourselves into these little worlds where we are able to just focus and not be interrupted, I think that is the thing that makes people feel so chilled. Yeah. And when you say it, it sort of seems so obvious. Do you feel like, I know you said in 2011, you were certainly a kind of lone voice then, and now there's a lot of people, um, you know, singing from the same, um, the same hymn sheet on this. But still, I wonder, do you look around and think why when something sort of that you can so powerfully persuade us is so easy for, for all the things we need, is it still not really encouraged? There are still not very many, perhaps you could disagree with me, people, you know, like yourself telling us to just do something like this each day, so simple. We don't, we don't get encouraged to do that. In fact, we sort of still think of it as a, as a, as a children's activity. I don't know. I don't know if it's competing voices or something more cynical and, you know, like the world works better if we're all on social media comparing our lives to other people and watching their ads. I think instinctively we all know the right things and it's just whether or not the glossiness of the other options takes our eye. So I think it yeah, I mean, I think we all know that we shouldn't look at our phones at night. We should go for more walks. We should read more books. We should do all these things. We should drink more water. I think instinctively we do know, but we live in a world now with so many distractions and temptations that it's hard to filter that out, particularly when the more temptations, those, you know, like perhaps less good for you options have you know a lot of money and um research behind them like social media is designed to keep you on there for as long as possible it's part of the reason why I'll never do an app so I got approached to do a coloring app quite a few times and I was hesitant don't really like digital and then I was you know really advised strongly that you should do an app an app is it's a good thing I was like well I'm not really sure like I like the hand-drawn stuff so we spoke to the app people and they were explaining, you know, how we would entice people in and get them to buy further packages and, you know, like how it'd be tapped to fill. And I was like, oh, it sounds horrible, like really bad. I was like, well, I want a timer on there. And after like 15 minutes, they need to be kicked out or a pinger comes up and says, you know, like, you can't, like you've been on here for 15 minutes. And they're like, oh no, that wouldn't, that's not a good idea. I was like, well, but I just, it just felt intrinsically bad. So I think it's about, listening to those wee quiet voices inside that know the good things so for me that was like we need to do pencils and pens we don't need to do pixels and tapping um and following those voices yeah yeah and you've talked about that community that you've built up and it's so you've got a huge following um, online. I've been sort of watching with, with in awe in the last few days, particularly, and I know all over the world. And I wonder what stories you might 
pick up just to share one or two of people who've because I've been seeing them myself and I know it's hugely um, um, appealing and it really sort of spurs you on what stories you could share of how it's helped people. Yeah, so I read one this afternoon about a lady who had gone to art school when she was younger and then just stopped drawing, like had her family, got really busy with that. And then there just wasn't the time to return to any form of creativity. And she's retired now. And she says she, um, she like, you know, she'd, she'd been to art school, like she'd studied painting and drawing. But with the busyness of life, everything just fell to the wayside. And she said, you know, during the lockdown, she discovered one of my books and picked it up and then found another one and then the online community and she has now found a, a community online of people that are similar to her that are like her that are encouraging her and she's being creative again you know she says she's got her paints back out again and she's like really interested in exploring that side of her you know and that's been quiet for decades and things like that I think are just wonderful like that was somebody who you know was almost you know almost forgotten completely and then they've been brought back and then there's other people that you know, maybe at school, somebody teased them or a teacher criticised the drawing and then, oh, I can't draw, so I'm just never going to do that again. And, you know, how cruel of that teacher was that one flippant comment to have taken creativity away from that child. And um, those kind of folks have been getting in touch and saying, you know, like, I just thought I couldn't be creative. And then I found your books and it's like been the entry that I needed that sort of easing off point back into discovering what I can do. And, you know, they're just so glad that, I'm just so glad that they found that and that, you know, we're, we're opening those doors again that should never have been shut in the first place. And that's so interesting. You say in the book, you know, paint outside, draw outside the lines. And, and perhaps we have all, I mean, it's now feeling so familiar to me. We've all been encu we're encouraged the opposite, really. When, when we, art education does perhaps make you think you can or you can't, you, you, you never feel there's an in-between with, with something like drawing. You, you feel you were told, I can't draw. And the really important thing for you when you say, draw outside the lines, you know, don't look for perfection is, is to encourage people. And, I, you know, people listening and people watching this to encourage people not to be curtailed by this idea that I, I can't draw. Do you feel that sort of everyone can? Because there's still that real yeah. sense holding you back that you've been told in the past, you can't draw, it's not your skill, kind of move away from that. Yeah, absolutely. Like, firstly, who are the people that are saying that? And what authority have they been given to say that? Because it's just, it's awful. But I think we've all been in a situation like that when we've been criticised. I remember being at school and we were working on a big um, mural to go in the corridor and I was in charge of um, painting the tree and I did quite a stylized sort of folk arty type tree which did not fit in with the teacher's envisaged <laughs> picture and I was really heavily criticized and I remember just feeling belittled and small and stupid and I think she even said you know like you're you're meant to be the arty one and I'm just like oh my days and I think all the time if that happened to me you know like and I was okay like obviously I kept drawing and things but it happens to kids all the time and what if they didn't have like I had parents at home going I'll just keep drawing you're fine you know like and other teachers that would encourage you so I think that that's I think that's really worrying but I I just think that I think that picking up a pencil and being creative is something that can just have such a profound effect on a person that we and it's so simple like I think the fact that we have cave painting says it all you know like these were really people with nothing with like so basic ways of living yet they felt the need to express themselves like I think that's a, a real a real sign that we're on to something. I'm sure there are many I, I'm nodding with such recognition because I'm suddenly having these flashbacks <laughs> I wonder if other people are having to just you know, being told you can't and just being having this idea of right, I can't draw. And now it's something that I really, really love doing, writing, sort of drawing cards. And I've I've tried to, I, I think I've left that behind, but it de it definitely holds people back for a very long time and stops you from from doing it because you just think it's not your it's not your area of expertise, which is it's so liberating about talking to you because you realize it's everybody's. And somebody asks whether you colour to relax, you yourself. Um, or, or what else you might do to relax? I think I might know the answer, but <laughs> let's. 
Yeah, I do. So I have to um I have to test out all the books and things. I never colour in work. I usually do it in the evenings when I'm at home. But other than that, you know, I love going for walks. I love being outdoors in nature. I find that is like that's my reset button. So if I'm not working and not with my kids, I like to be either in the garden or walking at the beach, the forest bit of wild swimming like everyone else is doing at the moment um I just find nature is just yeah it's the reset button isn't it but once you turn this into it well it's obviously for you has been a while once it becomes um, a career and, and a vocation does that take away from um how soothing it is how therapeutic it is how escapist it is like is it better to keep it aside as a as a as a playful hobby that you turn to away from your work I suppose yeah I can I can completely understand that mindset and I think there was definitely a time when I was taking on far too much commercial work and it was really busy and it did stop being fun and I felt like I was manufacturing artwork as opposed to creating it and that is not for me a good place to be and I think the privilege of the books is that I'm now in an opportunity and in a position where I can pick and choose the projects that I work on and I'm eternally grateful for that. But I think when you start out, you say yes to almost everything. You are scared that you're never going to get another job again. And you have to be in that kind of hustly kind of position. Um, but I would say for me personally now, if I'm working on a project and it stops being fun, that rings alarm bells. And it's not to say that I would immediately stop doing the project and abandon my client. That would be massively unprofessional for a start. But it's always a good sign. And I think those sort of signposts are helpful and they guide us and you know if you are finding that the thing that you once enjoyed is becoming a bit of a chore or there's too many voices or suddenly having a client dictate to you exactly what you can draw isn't what you want to do then it's just good to be aware of that I think the awareness is the important thing and then you can tweak and make changes whether that's you know keeping a certain type of art practice is just for you and not you know your job um or I don't know, maybe like being a bit more picky with your clients if you're in that lucky position that you can. But I definitely think boundaries as ever is always a good thing. And if there's something that brings you joy and that joy is getting sucked away, you need to find a way to protect that. And less people think this is just for adults. I did hear um, on one of your Instagram events and stories, you describe a lovely um, tale of your daughter. Um, she's involved in this creativity 30 days as well tell it tell us about that she refused to uh, go to bed oh yeah so it was after it was after trick-or-treating on Halloween night so my kids get the first copies the minute we get the the proofs back from the publishers they want a copy of the book they've seen every single page as it gets made anyway because every time I finish a page I print it out at work I bring it home and they are my um my panel that tests uh, and they are very critical with their feedback. So you can rest assured that everything has been vetted by a seven-year-old and a four-year-old before it reaches you. But <laughs> I'd finally got these um, very sugar, sugar high children um, into pajamas and into bed after the clock change and knowing that school was starting after half term the next day. And I'd got Evie to bed. No, sorry, I got Mia to bed, the youngest one. And then I went through to put Evie to bed, who was seven, and she wasn't even in her bed. And I just said, please get get in your bed it's really time for sleeping now and she said I can't mum I haven't done my 10 minutes of creative work yet I said don't worry about that it's really late in the day and she went no mum but I won't be happy <laughs> so she did her 10 minutes of creative work and in fact she, last night she did 20 minutes I was like well that's your 10 minutes for tomorrow if you've left it too late <laughs> There is a sense when, when I hear you describe those stories, there is a sense, isn't there, that um, although this is for everyone, it does help um, people to sort of bond with, understand their children better. I think there's, there's a huge sense of that, because once you're doing it, engaging in these things yourselves, I wonder if those stories have fed back to you that actually it's, it's also got the added benefit of helping people to do something that they can enjoy together with their kids on the same wavelength. Yeah, it's a great leveler, isn't it? Because you can sit at a kitchen table and you can either share one picture or a book, which I don't actually recommend because I get a little bit anxious when my kids are like scrolling all over it. Like I like their creativity, but I want them to have theirs and I'll have mine. So um, but it's nice to share a big packet of new pencils or a big biscuit tin full of pens. I think it's such a 
democratized, I guess, for lack of a better word, activity. Like the whole family can be around the table. It's not like the big kids are away doing something, the little ones are doing something else. And you can have conversations about what you're doing and share colors and really interact. I find there's there's tricky times in getting everyone to be like that now. And you know, whether it's a jigsaw puzzle or coloring, finding things that bring you all together around the kitchen table, I, I think are really powerful and a very important aspect of family life. And when you're raising children, I think, you know, like if they're in their bedrooms on their screens and not zoned in, it's just difficult to have a conversation. Whereas if you are sort of doing an activity like coloring, you can hold the conversation at the same time. And I just think that's the, that's the beauty of it. Well, it's been so lovely um, talking to you about it. And I, I really do. I think that most people who are with us this evening will have a copy of the book. I'm sure they will. And if they don't, I really, really encourage it. It's, as I said, it's just been such a joy to prepare for, for talking to you. And I'm, I, I'm looking forward to getting back to it. I'm not going to, despite your thing about not perfectionism, I won't <laughs> Um, be flashing my drawings in the screen um, but just particularly enjoying things like the mugs and, and cakes and, and all of that it just allows you to just fade away um, and, and sort of move into a different world for, for a while so thank you very much for that and thank you so much for joining us this evening and and talking to us and, and good luck with what's ever's next thank you everyone for coming thank you.